A hernia is an abnormal protrusion of tissue or organ through the wall of the cavity in which it is normally found. Usually it refers to the bowels protruding through a weak point in the abdominal wall. There are two types of hernia found in the groin, femoral or inguinal. Their locations are usually described relative to the pubic tubercle, which is the bony protrusion on the superior ramus of the pubic bone. Inguinal hernias usually arise superior and medial to the pubic tubercle, whereas femoral hernias arise inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Within the category of inguinal hernias, there are two types, direct and indirect. These differ based on where the bowels enter the inguinal canal. In the case of direct inguinal hernias, the bowels enter the inguinal canal directly through a weak point in the posterior wall of the inguinal canal called Hesselbach's triangle. This is delineated by three main structures, the rectus abdominis, the inguinal ligament, and the inferior epigastric vessels. Having delineated Hesselbach's triangle, we can better appreciate where the different types of hernia arise. As mentioned earlier, Direct inguinal hernias arise to a, due to a weakness in the posterior wall of the inguinal canal called Hesselbach's triangle. As both direct and indirect inguinal hernias arise superior to the inguinal ligament and lateral to the rectus abdominis, the main key structures to note here are the inferior epigastric vessels. Direct inguinal hernias arise medial to the inferior epigastric vessels, whereas indirect inguinal hernias arise lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels and enter the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring. Finally, femoral hernias arise inferior to the inguinal ligament. Now that we have recapped the anatomy, we can summarize the main differences between inguinal and femoral hernias. As for the typical presentations, direct inguinal hernias are more common in adult males and key risk factors include anything that causes increased intra-abdominal pressure, such as a chronic cough or constipation. Indirect inguinal hernias are more common in babies and young children and occur due to the processus vaginalis remaining open after birth. The processus vaginalis is an outpouching of peritoneum that allows the testicles to descend into the scrotum and should obliterate before birth. However, in some individuals, it will remain patent and providing a route through which the bowels can protrude into the inguinal canal. Femoral hernias are much more rare than inguinal hernias, but are relatively more common in women. They are associated with an increased risk of incarceration and strangulation. Once a hernia has been identified, there are a few features on examination that can help assess how serious the case is and how urgently intervention is needed. If the hernia appears soft and can easily be pushed back into the abdominal cavity, it is described as being reducible. This is a reassuring finding and generally suggests that the case can be managed as an outpatient. If you can't push the hernia back in, it is described as being incarcerated. This is of concern because it can result in bowel obstru obstruction and ischemia of the loop of bowel contained within the hernial sac. If the neck of the hernia is very narrow, it can strangle the blood vessels that supply the loop of bowel within the hernial sac. This can result in ischemia and necrosis of the bowel. It is a surgical emergency that requires urgent surgical intervention. Hernias are managed surgically and the urgency with which intervention is required depends on the nature of the presentation. Many hernias can be managed as an outpatient with an elective mesh repair. However, strangulated hernias will require emergency surgery and, in the worst cases, may even require resection of a segment of bowel.